What is going on everybody? Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video. And today what we're going to talk about is why I decided to go with a full-time web design development position instead of sticking with freelancing. That's coming up after the intro. All right, so this may not be a popular topic with most of you out there in the web design profession because a lot of people champion the freelancing lifestyle because it allows them a life of lavish luxury, great riches, Solomon type riches, and all these other things, Donald Trump money. Yeah, freelance doesn't offer any of that. I'm not, I'm not gonna even lie to you. Maybe, maybe for some people it does. Maybe you have achieved this high level of wealth, break it through the ceiling of maybe earning the maximum of fifty thousand dollars by landing these big time you know clients or whatever the case may actually be however i never went into the web design profession to actually stay in the realm of just merely doing freelancing i actually wanted to do this in hopes of getting with somebody like freelancing and enough to where i can actually have some stability some consistency with a high paying client that will just employ me for a duration of a contract length or just actually just employ me as any other normal employer would and actually that's where i'm at today i've actually achieved getting with somebody that has employed me based on my work based on my talents and and really those things that will bring value to their company because it's really not about me it's really what about it's all about what i'm going to do for the employer that that's all that matters now Here's some of the benefits that I actually found when you're actually getting into a full-time position. The first one that I actually realized is that you have access to these resources that I, I just didn't have access to when I was just freelancing. I, I didn't have access to these things, such as, well, what resources are you talking about, Deshaun? Well, for starters, I have access if I need to go to my boss and ask him like, hey, we need to get this equipment to you know record this for the website, take this photo. You got it, buddy. We, we're going to do that. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Instead of having to look at my own budget and go, crap, man, if I want to get these HD light, high quality photography, I mean, photography, I don't, I'm, I don't have that. I'm going to have to go up work or Fiverr and try to find a photographer. I don't even have to do that. The, the guy has his own in-house designers, photographers to make certain things happen. And whatever, whatever I need, I can just go and ask him and it's provided. Um, one of the things that I just got annoyed with with freelancing too is dealing with some of the clients I was dealing with and you may actually say to me while you're watching this that that's your problem. You, you felt that freelancing and that may very well be the case. But what I'm talking about when prefacing it like this is the fact that I, the clients that I actually was dealing with, they either were, they were just broke. Uh, they had these high expectations and wanting something for nothing, one million dollar websites for 50 bucks. And I'm like, you know, you're, you're, you're talking to somebody that really wants to add value and, and bring you to a point to where you're going to be uber successful with your company by building your brand online in the best possible way there is but you're wanting you're and what you're requesting you need to go you do need to go to things like upwork or fiverr or you know go to india or something and, and get the work that you're looking for for what you're expecting okay because if you're expecting this upper echelon of work but for for peanuts then that's that's where you actually need to go you're you're talking to the wrong person and that, that's a huge problem i think those industries created this sort of mentality amongst people that this stuff is cheap and this is hard work this is mentally taxing and exhausting it may you may not be doing anything physically per se but this is a lot of work on your on your mental stability like i can only probably web design like maybe four hours straight if i'm really in the zone and i'm really trying to solve a problem time is like i feel like i'm in the hyperbolic time chamber from dragon ball z like there is no time limit time just seems to melt away but uh for the most part if it's a problem or if it's something that i'm just kind of piddling around with probably usually every two hours i'm gonna need like a mental break probably go play some video games do some push-ups take a walk read do something you know watch a youtube video i need that those mental breaks when i'm doing this if i'm really engaged like i said time just melts away all right so here's a little aside to this video because i'm a little too geeked that i'm actually doing a free full-time position in web design my profession my career right now and i don't want to bash freelancing too much because freelancing is a necessary step in the process it's actually for me 
In my opinion, it's a means to an end, but very much necessary because you, throughout the process, you get to build, you had the opportunity to build a network full of people by building that client base. You get your skill level up through a various assortment of projects and through those projects, they dictate what you need to learn, what type of skills you need to pick up, the functionalities, those sorts of things. The only thing with freelancing is it still can be scattered because your focus isn't really straight. It's, it's not really linear. That's the main thing that I want to say. So say, for example, you have a project. That project is probably going to demand that you learn some JavaScript functionalities, depending on if you're doing a, a certain type of form function that does some nifty, spiffy, fancy thing, sending information to the database in a certain way, or a specific CSS animation. If you're doing a, you know, a, a, a standard website for somebody, WordPress, and you, you may not want to add a word a plugin, whatever the case may be, projects are going, going to call for different skills. Whereas if you're working with a company and they only have you on as a JavaScript developer, well, your focus has now become very linear and you're getting, you're able to go deeper and deeper into JavaScript. And it could be the same way if you're freelancing, but that may actually be based on if your whole initial focus is to just be a JavaScript developer and you're just picking up projects that's going to deepen you even more. So that's pretty much what I wanted to kind of add to this video because I don't want to bash freelancing too much. There are a lot of people out there that are probably making a good zillion amount of dollars, though I doubt it. If you watch Mike Locke's video, Mike Locke is somebody that I followed for a long time here on YouTube. He even mentions that there is a, a cap to you being a freelancer. And he wasn't wrong because I got to experience that firsthand in my life. I didn't. I really didn't believe him because I was thinking that if I'm freelancing, I should be able to dictate my own prices and the type of clients I should actually get. But because everything is so unpredictable and so inconsistent with freelancing that you, you, you really don't dictate how much you're going to make. The market almost dictates it, dictates it to you. So anyway, just a little side note here, something I just was when I was editing the video, some things I thought about, and I'm just going to add it right now. You, you can go on these, like, you may have times where you're up on these these high highs, and then when the lows are really low, like, your income, you're really having to figure out, like, how am I going to make the money for mortgage this month, or how am I going to get some food to eat, or I don't have any extra spending money for any desirable things for me to do because lifestyle involvement is is huge in a lot of people's lives we always talk about the basic needs of uh clothing food roof over your head but you, you have lifestyle needs and wants that if you don't have that that you can find yourself being like bored out of your mind and, and just completely losing it so those things do matter and freelancing is very inconsistent unless you're just really good at sales and, and booking clients and those sorts of things like that you have you know a whole surplus of people that just need websites or whatever the case may be an application you're going to be scrounging for is your next dollar amount whatever you know it's very unpredictable that's the problem and and a full-time web development position is very consistent it, there's a lot of stability unlimited resources so yeah, I'm, I, I have to vouch right now for wanting to have a full-time position. That would be actually my recommendation. You may feel differently and you may be a seasoned vet watching this video and you may actually say like freelance lifestyle has afforded me control of my own time, that sort of thing. But I argue with you that you could actually get with somebody, a good employer, if you actually land employment that will make your actual life like just as easy as you having, I guess, that same control over like freelancing. But I, I can't lie to you, the, the resources and, and the freedom that my boss currently allows me with, with some, you know, expectations and give responsibilities given with certain projects, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it right now. So I'm very happy to be away from freelancing for quite some time. And I'm, I'm kind of done with just doing services for people. I want to just create products and build systems that other people can use and I can kind of teach them how to use those things instead of just doing these services, build my website for me and dealing with these insane expectations. So that's going to be it for this video. Please let's discuss this further in the comments below. The next thing that you can do is watch the next video over here, over here. I don't, I don't, I don't really even know. Like however YouTube does it, and wherever you're watching this, there'll be a link in the description for the next video or just somewhere in the comment cards. Thank you guys for watching. See y'all in the next video. God bless y'all.